Let's have a look at the array and the atom array. So the array object creates copies of an object and arranges them in a spherical form or a wave form. The wave amplitude can be animated. Also, the original object must be a child of the array. The copies are placed around the array's object origin. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to take the array object, and I'm going to drop a sphere in the scene. Make that a little smaller, scale it down. And then I'm going to drop the sphere underneath the array. And boom, we get our copies. And the array is in the middle, so all these are going around the array's origin. Let's take a look and see what we have over here as far as parameters. So we've got a radius. It's pretty obvious. Copies, however many we want there. Create some interesting things like that. The amplitude is the max movement in Y. We can move these up like that. The frequency, that sets the rotational wave velocity. The array frequency defines the number of waves. And render instances, this has to do with memory. So if you check this, it's going to render these out with regard to the memory usage. And basically, it can render almost an unlimited amount of geometry without overloading the memory. So that's a good thing to turn on. And I just want to mention that all of these are animatable because they have the little dot here. If we wanted to animate any of these properties, we could do that. Okay, so that's the array. Let's get rid of that. Let's take a look at the atom array. Now, this is an interesting operator. Let me just pull a landscape into the scene. And we will scale it up. Let's make some adjustments here to get some interesting looking geometry. All right, let's say that we're happy with that. So if we render that right now, that's what we've got. But when we put the atom array in there, basically what it's going to do, it's going to create an automatic lattice structure from each of the child's objects. So everything that's underneath, all the object edges are going to be replaced with cylinders and all points are replaced with spheres. So let's go ahead and take this and put it underneath the atom array. And if we render again, see that we get this sort of a result. Let's go over here and make a couple adjustments. So if we set these two numbers to the same thing, then we're probably going to get something a little more interesting looking. Let's take a look at that. Even take these down further. And we're going to get something like that. We start to get the idea. It's a very interesting effect that you can get with this. Let's take it down to that. And if we render again, there we go. Now that's starting to look really cool. Let's take a look at this with another object. Let's turn it off here. Get rid of the landscape. And just use it with a simple sphere. Let's put the sphere underneath it. Turn it on. Probably going to need to turn these numbers up a little bit with this. So that's at 1. We can take our sphere, change the type, icosahedron, and let's change these numbers so we can get something like that. So I think you get the idea. Just play around with it. It's a very, very interesting operator, and you can get some really nice results with it.